Okay, give us a few seconds while I put this person on the scrap heap. That goes there. Goodbye, sayonara. When you don't hear from a woman for a very, very long time, and then they come back with a new number, and every time they contact you, it's not to ask how you're doing or how life is. It's to say, can you do me a favor? Can you get this for me? Or could you paint this? Or could you cut my grass? Or, or something ridiculous like that. And that's the only reason they contact you. And it's not like, well, I'm doing phenomenal, by the way. And they only contact you to get favors out of you and do nothing in return. They go on the scrap heap, much like those whiny people on BB. Anyways, the new stable, if you want to call it that, of Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns appeared at Survivor Series. Then they appeared again on Monday Night Raw. And apparently they interfered at main event, so I didn't see that. And it's been advertised that they're going to speak out on Monday Night Raw this coming Monday. And there's been so much talk, and I mean a lot of talk, on the internet, on forums, and on YouTube about this. And obviously, I said I would talk about it, and I will talk about it. And if you can see the title, or in the description box, you can see that I've said, I hope that this doesn't become another Nexus or another Legacy stable. Now, that's suggesting that there was something wrong with both stables and that this could happen with those three. So you think for a few seconds, let me clear my throat and have some tea and we'll get back to it. Okay, so I've compared this to Legacy and Nexus. Now, WWE has a history when it comes to stables of either doing really well or doing really badly and they just fizzle right out and to me the last time I remember a stable really being interesting was Evolution and that was because it was Triple H and it was Triple H's idea and obviously with the clout that he has they're not going to you know hot shot an angle that he wants to do and it created two big stars for the company in Dave Batista and Randy Orton now after that we had stables like La Familia which never really worked out we had a stable in The Legacy which people had high hopes for and everyone thought Ted DiBiase was going to be the main star of the group eventually and break through and it never happened and now he's in obscurity and no one really sees much of him and then we had stables like the Straight Edge Society which never really worked out and then we had a stable like Nexus and of all the stables of the modern era that's the one I'm going to compare it to the most because, like Nexus, they started off very hot. They've kind of come out of nowhere. It's new people, and they're attacking more established people within the company. And it gets everyone interested. And I don't think it was as impactful as the way Nexus debuted, when they tore up the ring and cut up the logos and just ripped the ring apart and everything like that. But it's been impactful enough and one of the reasons why it's been very impactful is because on the internet, and if you follow the internet, there's been a lot of internet buzz about Seth Rollins and a lot of internet buzz about Dean Ambrose, more so than Seth. Uh, and people have been talking for a year plus now as to when is Dean Ambrose going to debut? When is Seth Rollins going to debut? Why is it this person's on the show? And why is it that person's on the show? But Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are still in Florida or on NXT. Why are they not on the main roster? And then there were reports that, that Dean Ambrose was going to debut like back in April with Mick Foley and it never happened. There were reports that Seth Rollins was going to debut and feud with Cody Rhodes. There was just rumor upon rumor, speculation upon speculation and nothing really happened and people have come on and said come on think of an idea and get them on there and all the time the word from the company is that they have plans to bring Dean Ambrose up and when they bring him up they're going to have a big idea that presents him as a star right away and everyone's been wondering what that big idea would be I personally thought he was going to debut and attack The Undertaker at Wrestlemania I thought that would have been an excellent way to debut him but they've done another one and they've brought him in with two other people as part of a group that apparently will be called The Shield if you believe what you read on the internet. So let's hope that they don't treat them like another Nexus because it looks like they might go in that direction pretty quickly. And what I mean by that is if you've noticed in their debuts, 
or in their appearances, sorry my phone, in their appearances you would have noticed that they've come out and attacked Ryback and they've put him through tables and that they've put him through tables, they put him through table on Monday Night Raw, they put him through a table at Survivor Series uh, and it looks like, you know, with the TLC pay-per-view coming up, Ryback is going to be moved out of the title match and looks like he's going to be moved into maybe a three-on-one handicap table match. And if that's the case, it's very obvious that Ryback is likely to win that. And that's going to hurt your new core group of guys that you've just brought in. And that's not a way you want to start them off in their first match. And if that's the case, and that's just purely me speculating, then you could have used Primo Cologne and Epico and somebody else to do that. Because it's a serious waste of three potential superstars for your company. Now, the other thing is, are they going to be a three-person group? Or are they going to be a group that are with CM Punk and Paul Heyman? And to be honest, that's like an internet wrestling fan's dream, right? You've got Dean Ambrose... Seth Rollins, CM Punk and Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns would be like the dark horse of that and if that's the case he could benefit but with those two, three, four, five names that I've mentioned that could really be a very interesting and very very watchable stable on TV and if that's the case that's going to get me very interested now let's hope that they present them as equals because that's the other problem that was the problem with Legacy when Legacy was formed Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase and Manu for the short time that he was there or the cup of coffee that he had while he was there they were not presented as these guys with momentum who were future stars they were just presented as Randy Orton's lackeys they would lose matches they wouldn't really dominate in any specific area that they were in they were just losing and losing and it's like well how can we have faith in them when they break apart from Randy we don't and I believe that's one of the main reasons why Ted DiBiase is in obscurity right now because of how he was presented but if that's going to be the case with these guys then again it's a waste of an idea why not present them as a force, kind of like a modern day version of the Four Horsemen in a sense. Let Paul Heyman be like the JJ, CM Punk be the Flair, and then the rest of them kind of be the Wyndham's, the Blanchards, and the... Wyndham's, the Blanchards, fucking hell, I can't remember my history, my brain, sorry. This is old age for you. But you get my drift. If they present them as a force, and they're all forces on their own, but together they're almost unstoppable, and will bring the company to its knees, then this could be a very, very interesting few months to ha to watch now what's going to happen with them in the long run eventually at some point we know they're going to split them up but let's hope that they do enough things with them throughout the years or throughout the months where they have enough stock that when they do split and go their individual ways that they can actually be successful enough and go forward but me saying that I also have to remember that it's really up to the company and how far the company want them to go and let's hope they don't put shackles and handcuffs on them and fiddle about with them or do their usual thing where they have a new star lose every single week and then go oh we're putting the money in the bank in him he's going to be the champion it's all fixed because it doesn't work like that uh, I mean look at Dolph Ziggler right now that's another video that I've already done Let's hope that they actually present them strong and they go forward with them and they can have successful careers. Uh, I think Roman Reigns will be the dark horse. The reason being is there's a lot of hype and buzz about Rollins and Ambrose, but Roman Reigns is kind of quietly in the group. He's, of the three, I wouldn't say he's the best of the three. I wouldn't say he's awful. He's okay, he's a big guy, he can move, he's athletic, but you can tell he could do with a few more years. But it might help him if he's with the other four people or five people in the group they've all got more experience than him they can kind of mold him and he could become really really good much like Batista did in Evolution in some respects so hopefully they do that Dean Ambrose do I need to say anything else about him I mean what has been said by him that I can't say he is a great prospect a tremendous heel character very very believable worker just pure entertainment if you've ever seen his stuff in Florida if you've seen his stuff in Dragon Gate USA if you've seen his stuff in Evolve if you've seen his stuff in CZW the guy is a serious character he would be a perfect foil for CM Punk 
if he turned heel, uh, you know, if Punk turned babyface and he was the heel. That could be a real great WrestleMania match. And they had a phenomenal match in Florida a year ago. So, I mean, there's always potential there. And I believe Ro um, well, Ambrose could be one of the top stars and one of the greatest villain characters that they ever have. But that's up to the company again. And then Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins I'm a huge fan of. Never really talked about him enough on my videos. Loved him when he was Tyler Black in Ring of Honor. I was familiar with him before when he did that. Uh, before he debuted with Ring of Honor in the independent scene. Always liked his work. He can be a bit up and down on promos. Sometimes he's really good and other times he's, you know, a bit, ugh, you know, Roderick Strong level. But with the company he's keeping, he has no choice but for his verbal skills to get better. And so long as they don't give him stupid material that no one believes in, then he should be alright. He's like a young CM Punk and Jeff Hardy put together without Jeff Hardy's lunacy and drug usage and without CM Punk's anger towards fans in real life. And that could be really, really good. And he'd be a great babyface character to break out. And I'm going to stop right there because my mouth is drying up and I can't think of what else to say. And maybe it's up to you now to write your comments. So write some stuff. Tell me how you feel. Do you think this is going to work? What do you see as the future for the group? and oh by the way i'm down at wrestling forums by the way so i'm posting there so say hello and stop by uh hello to wrestling rookie uh who i added or sub to sub to him if you haven't seen him uh and mma the mma guy that i will shout out on my next mma video take care i'm gonna get going and yeah see you later bye